5 Charity Sarah Sarah's Life Charity Sarah Sarah's Life Parisha 5 Torah Bereshit Genesis 23 1 25 18 Haftarayim Lakim Aleph 1 Kings 1 1 31 Birit Hadashim Atitayahu Matthew 8 19 22 27 3 10 Torah Bereshit Genesis 23 1 25 18 23 1 Sarah lived to be 127 years old these were the years of Sarah's life. Sarah died in Kiyadaba, also known as Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Avraham came to mourn Sarah and weep for her. Then he got up from his dead one and said to the sons of Het, I am a foreigner living as an alien with you. Let me have a burial site with you, so that I can bury my dead wife. The sons of Het answered Avraham, Listen to us, my lord. You are a prince of God among us, so choose any of our tombs to bury your dead. Not one of us would refuse you his tomb for burying your dead. Avraham got up, bowed before the people of the land, the sons of Het, and spoke with them. If it is your desire to help me bury my dead, then listen to me ask Ephraim the son of Tzotcha to give me the cave of Machpelah, which he owns, the one at the end of his field. He should sell it to me in your presence at its full value, then I will have a burial site of my own. Ephraim the Hitti was sitting among the sons of Het, and he gave Avraham his answer in the presence of the sons of Het who belonged to the ruling council of the city. No, my lord. Listen to me, I'm giving you the field, with its cave I'm giving it to you, in the presence of my people I give it to you. Avraham bowed before the people of the land and spoke to Ephraim in their hearing please be good enough to listen to me, I will pay the price of the field, accept it from me, and I will bury my dead there. But Ephraim answered Avraham, my lord, listen to me, a plot of land worth for hundred silver shekels what is that between me and you, just bury your dead. Avraham got the point of what Ephraim had said. So he weighed out for Ephron the amount of money he had specified in the presence of the sons of Het. Four hundred silver shekels of the weight accepted among merchants, ten pounds. Thus the field of Ephron in Machpelah, which is by Mamre the field. Its cave and all the trees in and around it were adeded to Avraham as his possession in the presence of the sons of Het who belonged to the ruling council of the city. Then Avraham buried Sarah his wife in the cave of the field of Machpelah, by Mamre, also known as Hebron, in the land of Canaan. The field and its cave had been purchased by Avraham from the sons of Het as a burial site which would belong to him twenty for one by now Avraham was old, advanced in years. And Adonai had blessed Avraham in everything. Avraham said to the servant who had served him the longest, who was in charge of all he owned, Put your hand under my thigh. Because I want you to swear by Adonai, God of heaven and God of the earth, that you will not choose a wife for my son from among the women of the Kenani, among whom I am living. But that you will go to my homeland to my kinsman, to choose a wife for my son Yitzchak. The servant replied, Suppose that woman isn't willing to follow me to this land. Must I then bring your son back to the land from which you came? Avraham said to him, See to it that you don't bring my son back there. Adonai, the God of heaven who took me away from my father's house and away from the land I was born in, who spoke to me and swore to me, I will give this land to your descendants he will send his angel ahead of you, and you are to bring a wife for my son from there. But if the woman is unwilling to follow you, then you are released from your obligation under my oath. Just don't bring my son back there. The servant put his hand under the thigh of Abraham his master and swore to him concerning the matter. Then the servant took ten of his master's camels and all kinds of gifts from his master, got up and went to Aram Naharim, to Natchez city. Toward evening, when the women go out to draw water, he had the camels kneel down outside the city by the well. He said, Adonai, God of my master Abraham, Please let me succeed today, and show your grace to my master Avraham. Here I am, standing by the spring, as the daughters of the townsfolk come out to draw water. I will say to one of the girls, please lower your jug, so that I can drink. If she answers, yes, drink, and I will water your camels as well, then let her be the one you intend for your servant Yitzchak. This is how I will know that you have shown grace to my master. Before he had finished speaking, Rivka the daughter of Betul son of Milka the wife of Natcher Avraham's brother, came out with her jug on her shoulder. The girl was very beautiful, a virgin, never having had sexual relations with any man. She went down to the spring, filled her jug and came up. The servant ran to meet her and said, Please give me a sip of water from your jug to drink, drink, my lord, she replied, and immediately lowered her jug onto him and let him drink. When she was through letting him drink, she said, I will also draw water for your camels until they have drunk their fill. She quickly emptied her jug into the trough, then ran again to the well to draw water, 
and kept on drawing water for all of his camels. The man gazed at her in silence, waiting to find out whether Adonai had made his trip successful or not. When the camels were done drinking, the man took a gold nose ring weighing one-fifth of an ounce and two gold bracelets weighing four ounces and asked, Whose daughter are you? Tell me, please, is there room in your father's house for us to spend the night? She answered, I am the daughter of Betul the sun milker bore to Natcha, adding, We have plenty of straw and fodder, and room for staying overnight. The man bowed his head and prostrated himself before Adonai. Then he said, Blessed be Adonai, God of my master Abraham, who has not abandoned his faithful love for my master. Because Adonai has guided me to the house of my master's kinsman, the girl ran off and told her mother's household what had happened. Rivka had a brother named Laban, Laban. When he saw the nose ring, and the bracelets on his sister's wrists besides, and when he heard his sister Rivka's report of what the man had said to her, he ran out to the spring and found the man standing there by the camels. Come on in, he said, you whom Adonai has blessed. Why are you standing outside when I have made room in the house and prepared a place for the camels? So the man went inside, and while the camels were being unloaded and provided straw and fodder, water was brought for him to wash his feet and the feet of the men with him. But when a meal was set before him, he said, I won't eat until I say what I have to say. Laban said, Speak, he said, I am Avraham's servant. Adonai has greatly blessed my master, so that he has grown wealthy, he has given him flocks and herds, silver and gold, male and female slaves, camels and donkeys. Sarah my master's wife bore my master a son when she was old, and he has given him everything he has. My master made me swear, saying, You are not to choose a wife for my son from among the women of the Kenani, among whom I am living. Rather, you are to go to my father's house, to my kinsman, to choose a wife for my son, I said to my master. Suppose that woman isn't willing to follow me. Abraham answered me, Adonai, in whose presence I live, will send his angel with you to make your trip successful, and you are to pick a wife for my son from my kinsman in my father's house. This will release you from your obligation under my oath, but if, when you come to my kinsman, they refuse to give her to you, this too will release you from my oath. So today, I came to the spring and said, Adonai, God of my master Abraham, if you are causing my trip to succeed in its purpose, then, here I am, standing by the spring. I will say to one of the girls coming out to draw water, let me have a sip of water from your jug, if she answers, yes, drink, and I will water your camels as well, then let her be the woman you intend for my master's son. And even before I had finished speaking to my heart, there came Rivka, going out with her jug on her shoulder, she went down to the spring and drew water. When I said to her, please let me have a drink, she immediately lowered the jug from her shoulder and said, drink and I will water your camels as well. So I drank, and she had the camels drink too. I asked her, whose daughter are you? And she answered, the daughter of Betul son of Natcha, whom Milka bore to him. Then I put a ring on her nose and the bracelets on her wrists, bowed my head, prostrated myself before Adonai and blessed Adonai, God of my master Abraham, for having led me in the right way to obtain my master's brother's, grand, daughter for his son. So now if you people intend to show grace and truth to my master, tell me, but if not, tell me, so that I can turn elsewhere, Laban and Betul replied, since this comes from Adonai, we can't say anything to you either bad or good, Rivka is here in front of you, take her and go, let her be your master's son's wife, as Adonai has said, when Abraham's servant heard what they said, he prostrated himself on the ground to Adonai, then the servant brought out silver and gold jewelry, together with clothing, and gave them to Rivka, he also gave valuable gifts to her brother and mother, he and his men then ate and drank and stayed the night, in the morning they got up, and he said, send me off to my master, her brother and, mother said, let the girl stay with us a few days, at least ten, after that, she will go, he answered them, don't delay me, since Adonai has made my trip successful, but let me go back to my master, they said, we will call the girl and see what she says, they called Rivka and asked her, will you go with this man, and she replied, I will, so they sent their sister Rivka away, with her nurse, Abraham's servant and his men. They blessed Rivka with these words Our sister, may you be the mother of millions, and may your descendants possess the cities of those who hate them. Then Rivka and her maids mounted the camels and followed the man, so the servant took Rivka and went on his way. Meanwhile, Yitzchak, one evening after coming along the road from Beer Lachero he was living in the Negev went out walking in the field, and as he looked up, he saw camels approaching. Rivka too looked up, and when she saw Yitzchak, 
She quickly dismounted the camel. She said to the servant, Who is this man walking in the field to meet us? When the servant replied, It's my master, she took her veil and covered herself. The servant told Yitzchak everything he had done. 67 Then Yitzchak brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and took Rivka, and she became his wife, and he loved her. Thus was Yitzchak comforted for the loss of his mother. 25 One Avraham took another wife, whose name was Ketura. She bore him Zimran, Yokshan, Maidan, Midan, Yishbak, and Shuach, Yokshan fathered Shvar and Didan. The sons of Didan were Ashrim, Eltashim and Elumim. The sons of Midan were Epha, Epha, Hanok, Avida and Eldar. All these were descendants of Ketura. Avraham gave everything he owned to Yitzchak. But to the sons of the concubines he made grants while he was still living and sent them off to the east, to the land of Kedem, away from Yitzchak his son. This is how long Avraham lived 175 years. Then Avraham breathed his last, dying at a ripe old age, an old man full of years, and he was gathered to his people. Yitzchak and Ishmael his sons buried him in the cave of Machpelah, in the field of Ephraim the son of Tzotcha the Hitti, by Mamre, the field which Avraham purchased from the sons of Het. Avraham was buried there with Sarah his wife. After Avraham died, God blessed Yitzchak his son, and Yitzchak lived near Elacheroi. Here is the genealogy of Yishmael, Avraham's son, whom Hagar the Egyptian woman bore to Avraham. These are the names of the sons of Yishmael, listed in the order of their birth. The firstborn of Yishmael was Enved, followed by Kida, Adbeel, Mivsam, Misma, Duma, Massa, Hadad, Tima, Y2, Nafish and Kedma. Mafti, these are the sons of Yishmael, and these are their names, according to their settlements and camps, twelve tribal rulers. This is how long Yishmael lived 137 years. Then he breathed his last, died and was gathered to his people. Yishmael's sons lived between Havilah and Shah, near Egypt as you go to Ordashar. He settled near all his kinsmen. After I am Lakim Aleph, 1 Kings, 1 1 31, 1 1 King David grew old, the years took their toll, and he couldn't get warm even when they covered him with bedclothes. His servants said to him, Let us try to find a young virgin for my lord the king. She can wait on the king and be a companion for him, and she can lie next to you, so that my lord the king will get some heat. After looking through all of Israel's territory for a beautiful girl, they found Avishai the Shunamit and brought her to the king. The girl was very beautiful and became a companion for the king. She took care of him, but the king did not have sexual relations with her. Adoni I the son of Haggit was beginning to claim that he would be king. To this end he organized chariots and horsemen, with fifty men to run ahead of him. His father had never in his life confronted him by asking, Why are you behaving this way? Moreover, he was a very handsome man, he was born next after Avshalom, he conferred with Yov the son of Tzruiah and Deviata the Kohen, and they both supported Adoniah. But Tzadok the Kohen, Binaiah the son of Yehoda, Nathan the prophet, Shimei, Rei and David's elite guard were not on Adoniah's side. One day Adoniah killed sheep, oxen and fattened calves at the stone of Zochlit, by Ein Rogel. He summoned all his brothers the king's sons, and all the men of Yehuda the king's servants. But he did not summon Nathan the prophet, Benaiah, the elite guard or Shlomo his brother. Nathan went to Bathsheba the mother of Shlomo and said, Haven't you heard that Adonai the son of Haggit has become king without the knowledge of David our lord? Now, come, please let me give you advice, so that you can save both your own life and that of your son Shlomo. Go, get in to see King David, and say to him, My lord, king, didn't you swear to your servant, your son Shlomo will be king after me, he will sit on my throne, so why is Adoni I a king? Right then, while you are still talking with the king, I will also come in after you and confirm what you are saying. Bathsheba went into the king in his room, the king was very old. Avishai the Shunamit was in attendance on the king, Bathsheba bowed, prostrating herself to the king. The king asked, what do you want? She answered him, my lord, you swore by Adonai your God to your servant. Your son Shlomo will be king after me, he will sit on my throne, but now, here is Adoni I ruling as king. And you, my lord the king, don't know anything about it. He has killed oxen, fattened calves and sheep in great numbers. And he has summoned all the sons of the king, Eviata the Kohen and Yov the commander of the army, but he didn't summon Shlomo your servant. As for you, my lord the king, all Israel is watching you, they are waiting for you to tell them who is to sit on the throne of my lord the king after him. If you don't, then, when my lord the king sleeps with his ancestors, I and my son Shlomo will be considered criminals. Right then, while she was still talking with the king, 
Nathan the prophet entered. They told the king, Nathan the prophet is here. After coming into the king's presence, he prostrated himself before the king with his face to the ground. Nathan said, My lord king, did you say, Adonai is to be king after me? He will sit on my throne, for he has gone down today and killed oxen, fattened calves and sheep in great numbers. And he has summoned all the king's sons, the commanders of the army and divided the Kohen, right now they are eating and drinking in his presence and proclaiming, Long live King Adonai. But he didn't summon me your servant, or Tzadok the Kohen, or be near the son of Yehoiada or your servant Shlomo. Is this authorized by my lord the king without your having told your servant who would sit on the throne of my lord the king after him? King David answered by saying, Summon Bathsheba to me. She entered the king's presence and stood before the king. Then the king swore an oath as Adonai lives, who has delivered me from all adversity, as I swore to you by Adonai the God of Israel, your son Shlomo will be king after me. He will sit on my throne in my place, so will I do today. Bathsheba bowed with her face to the ground, prostrating herself to the king, and said, Let my lord King David lie forever. Pirit had a Shematitiah who, Matthew, 8 19 22, 27 3 10, Matthew, 8 19 8 or a teacher approached and said to him, Rabbi, I will follow you wherever you go. Yeshua said to him, The foxes have holes, and the birds flying about have nests, but the son of man has no home of his own. Another of the Talmudim said to him, Sir, first let me go and bury my father, but Yeshua replied, Follow me, and let the dead bury their own dead. 27 3 When Yehuda, who had betrayed him, saw that Yeshua had been condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the thirty silver coins to the head Kohanim and elders, saying, I sinned in betraying an innocent man to death, what is the to us? They answered, that's your problem, hurling the pieces of silver into the sanctuary, he left. Then he went off and hanged himself. The head Kohanim took the silver coins and said, it is prohibited to put this into the temple treasury, because it is blood money. So they decided to use it to buy the potter's field as a cemetery for foreigners. This is how it came to be called the field of blood, a name it still bears. Then what Zedkari the prophet spoke was fulfilled, and they took the thirty silver coins, which was the price the people of Israel had agreed to pay for him. And he used them to buy the potter's field, just as the Lord directed me 957 as they were traveling on the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Yeshua answered him, The foxes have holes, and the birds flying about have nests, but the son of man has no home of his own. To another he said, Follow me. But the man replied, Sir, first let me go away and bury my father. Yeshua said, Let the dead bury their own dead. You, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, sir, but first let me say goodbye to the people at home. To him Yeshua said, No one who puts his hand to the plough and keeps looking back is fit to serve in the kingdom of God.